Hi beautiful people, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing fantastic wherever you are in this world. Hope everybody has had an amazing weekend. You guys, I know I have been MIA for over a week. My kiddos went back to school last week and I had no idea it would have such an effect on me. I promise you the whole of last weekend, I the anxiety just got a hold of me. I was just panicked. I was... You know, not knowing the unknown and where that drives you. And especially the mere fact is that these kids are going back to school. What we going, what's going on in this world? Everybody's just in limbo. Nobody wants to do the right thing. And it just, it took such an effect on me. I promise you last weekend, I was walking the streets of my neighborhood from like 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock in the morning. The way the anxiety had me. It was more for the mere fact is that I was so anxious for my kids going back to school, especially in this environment. Are the other kids going to be responsible to come always wear their mask at all times? We drilled it in our kids to emphasize to them how important it is to have their mask on at all times. My two middle kids that's 15 and 13 they are vaccinated but my baby girl she's not vaccinated she's only 11 years old so it was so important and i was just paralyzed with anxiety you guys it's i've never experienced that in such a long time and it just took a hold of me it totally took a hold of me but also i had to figure out now with them being back at school how i was going to manage my time because at the end of the day, my two younger kids go to a middle school, a magnet school, so that's like a ways away. And then my older daughter, my daughter that's in high school, it takes me literally 40 minutes without traffic to get her to school. So we leave in the house between 5.30, 5.45, and after dropping everybody off at school, I'm back home by 7.20. So it's a lot. And then to come back and sort the house out and clean up and cook and do all that kind of stuff. But I couldn't do anything the first week of school. It was always on my mind. Are they okay? Are they doing the right thing? Is everything going okay? Are they being fed? Are they eating? You know, it just was all just so much. But I think I do have it down now. So all is well there. Kids are doing great at school. They're loving every minute of school. They're loving being back at school, interacting with their teachers, interacting with their friends. So that's a relief. I know I have missed out on so much. Today, when I was trying to catch up with all this Katie Joy situation, the last I left, Katie was all about how she was going to cooperate. And then she's not going to go back and forth on social media. Before we get into the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload and my usual disclaimer. Please don't take what I say as fact. Feel free to do your own research and come to your own conclusion. And then, lo and behold, I find out that Katie sent out a cease and desist to Todd Chrisley for them not to talk about her and how he's defaming her. And I'm like, where did all this stem from? And then she's all about how she's standing for her friend Lindsay Chrisley and you guys I got so much to talk about in regard to that but that's going to take me quite a while but I'm here today to talk about the whole episode about some yearning that took place last week Friday if I'm not mistaken and she was all up in arms about it and it's so weird to me Katie feels she can do it to other people or she can do things to other people, but nobody can do anything to her, which just blows my mind. So I'm going to read her Twitter, which she put, it was like a blog. It truly was like a blog, but let me read it to you. So this evening, Katie put a, tw uh, or today, should I say, sun being Sunday, Katie put a pinned tweet on her Twitter. And this is what it read. Now, before I read the pin tweet, Katie had a hearing in regard to a TRO or HRO or RO. I don't know, but it had something to do with getting a restraining order against, well, like we know now, 
against Katie McDermott, okay? So when all this was unfolding, last week, Friday, Ellie, Truth Sleuth, was actually on Twitter saying how she was going to actually attend this hearing and give a rundown on what's happening in the hearing. So things just went haywire. And from when I listened to Katie Joy's Instagram Live, she explained that it was supposed to be a closed hearing because her son being a minor was involved. But, but the sad thing about it, on Friday when all this unfolded, Katie was on Twitter blasting Katie McDermott, blasting Truth Sleuth. And this is what really blew me away. Katie Joy actually says, Ellie, Truth Sleuth violated my privacy and safety today by attempting to attend a private hearing related to an RO I have against a party. Ellie did not get the password or link from me and it was not public. She either obtained it from the party I'm protected from or a friend of theirs. Now, can somebody please tell me and maybe this is just me being petty or just, this is a Zoom call, okay? A Zoom call, virtual. So how did she feel violated and how was her safety actually being threatened? I'm confused about this whole thing. But just because of the drama queen that Katie is, she will go make something, a mountain out of a molehill. But that's just me. Let's get back to our Twitter. So a pin tweet is regrading, not regarding, regrading my remote hearing. The passcode to my hearing was not public on the website. Remote access codes are only sent to the participants, witnesses and attorneys. Sharing of the code is prohibited by the court. Those who share that information violated this rule. And she links some article from the Minnesota Judicial Branch, whatever. Then she says, this account shared the remote access PDF publicly. This PDF was only sent to the parties, witnesses, and attorneys. No witness names had been provided to the court for this hearing. Sharing this PDF is a violation of the court's rules. Now, I want you guys to actually keep that law sentence in mind, especially as a violation of the court's rules. And she lists the person, but I'm not gonna list the person. Then she says the individual who shared the document with the Zoom link and password did so without the court's permission and in violation of the court orders. This account shared the full email to the participant and a PDF which was not public record. Access to remote hearings is not publicly available. Individuals must contact the court to be given access. Codes provided are not to be shared with anyone. Additionally, remote hearing access is also determined by the judge on a case-by-case -case basis. Our judge allowed no one in, which is true, but she's not stating like how she stated in her Instagram live, the reason the judge did not allow anybody in was because he was confused. He was like, or he or she, I don't know. Why is there so many people waiting? And then things were discussed and then obviously everything was shut down. Then she goes on and she says, for those that want to read the rules, you can see them on the website. And she gives the court. Anyone requesting access to the hearing as means to report on the case that as bloggers, media, YouTubers must contact the court to gain access and follow these rules. I'm sure Ellie said she did exactly that. She contacted the court. Don't quote me. Anyone who bought bypassed contacting the court directly to cover this hearing and was not given remote access or permission by the court violated this rule of the court again. The remote access code was not publicly available on their websites. Attempting to gain access to a hearing without approval by the judge. Approval by the court is a violation. The judge in this case closed the hearing. My son is a party to his case. 
and falsely reported CPS records and police reports regarding him are involved. Please stop with the misinformation. Okay. Okay. You had your say. So now let's go back to what you did. You don't want nobody doing all this to you. But it's okay when you did this to Joshua Dagger. Still a piece of shit. Don't get me wrong. So, she's so up in arms about these people not following rules. She herself didn't follow rules. Remember when she took a picture of Joshua Duggar during his arraignment? And she quickly said, oh no. She took a, a mental picture. When she slipped her tongue on an Instagram live. And she said she took a picture of Joshua Duggar. And then this is the best one to date. And then this is just the perfect one. You cannot hide from this, Katie. I have a picture of him at the arraignment. I wish I could share it. Now, this is just a theory of mine, okay? And, and you guys, you could not do this. I will insert the court's um, rules here so you can see. Like how she wants to insert the court's ruling on her case. There was also rules in regard to when she attended Joshua Duggar's arraignment, okay? Why is she not being held responsible for this, for her wrongdoing in this? Why? Because this is against the court's rules. She took a picture of Joshua Duggar, which she was not supposed to do. And this is just a theory. Let's go down the line, maybe two years down the line. Just my opinion, just a theory. I'm not saying she would do it, I'm just saying. Do you think that this woman would not try to sell that picture to the tabloids? She tried to do it with Amber Portwood, with what information she had on Amber Portwood, allegedly. I'm going to link that video that LB did in regard to showing or, or telling the story of how she tried to sell that story to tabloids. And also, why is it that she goes after, there was, she even said, the judge said there were 32 people waiting. 32 people. But at that time on Friday, she didn't even speak about anybody else. Well, obviously she had to talk about Katie McDermott. I get that. Because she was the one that's trying to fight this. But she sought out Ellie from True Sleuth. What she has with that woman, I have no idea. I truly have no idea. In my opinion, Katie needs to choose her battles. Because at this point, in my opinion, Katie is no journalist. Katie is definitely not a journalist or a reporter. I'm going to link an article done by the, by the Seattle Times. And this is what it says. Being on social media doesn't make you a journalist. June 2nd of 2021, it concluded that just having a camera and a YouTube channel isn't enough, at least not under state law. The case involved a YouTuber who had, and I will link that story down below so you guys can go ahead and read it for yourself. Whenever Katie Joy is being sued or gets into trouble, she's a journalist or she's a reporter. But any other time, she's like just telling the story. She's just giving her opinion. You got to make up your mind what you are, where you are. But in my opinion, you fall from a reporter. You fall from a journalist. You don't have the education. You don't have the credentials, Katie Joy. You are just a YouTuber. Like everybody else that sits in front of a camera and records, gives you opinion about shit. Okay? You are far from what a journalist or a reporter would do. You are, in my opinion, the biggest fraud going. The biggest backstabber going. Lately, look at your poor friend Lindsay. Unbelievable. I'm going to have a whole long video about that, you guys. I promise you. 
because I have a lot to say. Totally my opinion, but once again, in my opinion, you're the farthest from a journalist. So you guys, I think that's about it. One more thing before I leave. I just got this horrible message in regard to the Jeffree Star giveaway. I've posted off two, I think to three people. Two people wanted to post off to the same address. I've actually posted off three prizes to date. Nobody else has gotten a hold of me. If your name appears at the end of this video, please contact me on my Instagram or my email. So I would like to get those gifts or prizes out to you. If you're not interested, please let me know. I can just draw somebody else's name. But this person had the audacity to tell me that I don't understand how did you choose your winners. You have chosen people who have commented only once and nonsense comments. You are so biased. First of all, you guys, let me explain something. You see things like this. It's like, was it even worth your time? Secondly, I use the random generator picker on YouTube or online. That's how I pick my winners. I do not sift through and just read comments and see oh, which one, which comments are the most flattering. No. So by you saying that I'm doing it out of nonsense comments or I'm biased, that's you. That's what you think. That's not how I do things. Okay, so you just wasted your time. So you guys, once again, thank you so much for all your support. Thank you so much to those that have reached out to find out where I'm at. I'm fine now. I promise you guys, I won't do that again. But like I said, my kiddos are my life. They truly are my life. I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Please stay safe out there. Please wear your mask and please be kind to one another. So you guys, until the next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.